invite you to stand, if you would, for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from John, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world, and now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. When Jesus' disciples said, well, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe, Jesus replied? A time is coming and the fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone and yet I am not alone for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. One of the founding fathers of our country, of the United States of America, uh, Signer Declaration and Benjamin Franklin, he was reported to have said many wise and thoughtful things. Uh, but one in particular that uh, applies here today is a phrase that he said to somebody uh, about death and taxes. He says that only two things are certain in this world, death and taxes. But it could be true, I suppose. But Jesus leaves us today with an alternative guarantee of what is certain in this world. In the last verses of what you just heard read, Jesus says, while you are in this world, you will have trouble. That's certainly true. If you are in me, you will have peace. That's absolutely true. But Jesus says, take heart then. I have overcome the world. That last bit leaves us with hope and promise. Let's pray. Lord, we, we come this morning and we come from all kinds of different places. We carry all kinds of different things. Some wonderful and thoughtful and joyful and some sad and uh, troubled. Lord, we know trouble in our lives. Even if we are reluctant to admit it, we do know trouble. Trouble of our own making. Trouble that's brought to us by others. We know trouble. So today, Lord, let us take comfort in your word. Let us rest from all of our troubles and be in you, the living word. Give us your gospel so that we might take heart and rest assured that you have and will overcome all things in this world. Amen. Well, there are few guarantees in life, really. Uh, how many of you uh, buy a, a new piece of electronics or an appliance uh, or something like that, and you unpack the, the styrofoam and you take the plastic off and you pull the little things off the, the dials and all of that, and, you get in and down lane in the bottom of the box or the container, there's paper. There's an instruction sheet maybe on how to put it together, how to use it. But then there's the what? Warranty. The guarantee. The card that you fill out so that the company can stay in touch with you in case there's any problems. How much do you think that guarantee is worth? <laughs> how many of you fill out the card? <laughs> there's probably a couple of you I don't do. 
Well, those guarantees are probably not uh, very helpful. We know uh, in this life that there are a few things that can be that we can be so sure. I mean, for instance, just off the top of my list, our very own Minnesota Twins. Yeah, exactly. They have the best record in baseball this year. And yet, when you hear people talk about it, they go, yeah, they've got the best record. But there's this little bit of, well, I'm not sure it's for sure. It's not certain. There's no guarantee we're going further. And that's because what? We've been there before, right? But who knows? This could be the year. But even in baseball, there's nothing for sure. Or is there in life? You see, there's no guarantee either that uh, we'll have money or uh, resources. We, we put our uh, money away in our 401ks and uh, we watch the stock market go up and down. And we wonder if we'll have enough. There's no guarantee that we will. In fact, uh, some people who have great wealth, uh, for instance, who have won the lottery, and Evelyn Marie Adams is one of these people, she won $5.4 million in the New Jersey lottery. And after all kinds of trouble and some really bad relatives and lots of legal expenses and a good deal of time in Las Vegas, evidently, she lost all that money and filed for bankruptcy. You see, there's no guarantee that you'll have those things. There's no guarantee in life. And things can go south in a hurry. You see, you have no guarantee about your health either. You can work out every day. You can train. You can run. You can bicycle. You can lift weights. Cardio train. Run uh, for a marathon. You can eat healthy. You can eat kale. <laughs> Some reason only God knows, but... You can eat healthy food, and at the same time, after doing all those things, you can be one who will just get sick, or be diagnosed with cancer, or drop dead of a heart attack, without having ever seen a symptom. Of course, this is all the reason I have for not working out or doing anything. <laughs> Flo Hyman uh, was the leader of the USA women's volleyball team. Uh, she was on the team that won the silver medal at the Olympics. She was thought to be one of the finest women's volleyball players in the entire world. And during the match, uh, she, she rotated off and took the bench and then jumped up to, to cheer her team on. And she would be one of the most healthy, physically fit women there would be. And then suddenly she collapsed and that heart failure at the age of 31. It would appear that nothing in this world is for certain. And there is nothing for sure. And there seems to be no guarantees in life. Yet in our scripture, in the very end, verses 33 through 34 of today's gospel reading, Jesus wraps it up and he gives us two things that we can be certain of. Two things that we can count on. Two things that we can be absolutely for sure in our life. He says this to the disciples, and you have to understand the context, because John 16 is all taking place in the upper room. These are the last moments that the disciples have with Jesus. And within just a very short time, he will be taken, they'll go out to the Garden of Gethsemane, and Judas will betray them, and he will be arrested by the temple guards. Within hours of this, he'll be in trial, and they will be torturing him and persecuting him. Within a day, they will crucify him on the cross, and within three days, he will be raised from the dead. All of this is taking place, so when you hear this about to happen, you listen to these words and they have a particular concept. That there is something that you can be sure of. And Jesus guarantees us that two things are absolutely certain. And it's not death and text. It's two things. I'll read it again. 33 and 34. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. That in me, Jesus, you will have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. Here's the promise. I have overcome the world. Peace on one hand and trouble on the other. The two things we can be sure of. The two things that we can count on, according to Jesus. The two things that are guaranteed to come our way as a follower of Jesus. Peace and trouble. 
You see, our, our trouble, though, comes to us in various forms. I mean, uh, there is uh, three of them, actually. And the trouble that comes simply from living in a fallen world. The world around us uh, is uh, one in such that things just don't always work the way they should. For instance, my car would be an example of not always working the way it should, and maybe yours. For instance, my computer won't print. Another issue. Uh, all these things just happen in a broken world. Uh, they happen in a world where there's trouble. Nature doesn't always work right. We just heard in the news this morning of tornadoes, more tornadoes that took place, and some people were killed, and homes and communities were destroyed. And not only that, but flooding, and you can name your disaster, but sometimes nature doesn't work right either, and there's trouble. People don't always do the right thing, you see. They do things that hurt us, they, uh, whether directly or indirectly. People are sometimes the cause of our troubles. Sometimes it's economic decisions, and it's Wall Street, uh, or it's the government, or any kind of thing like that, where the effect of what they decide outside of our realm causes us trouble. And even more sinister is when thieves, or people who have evil intent, will steal or hack into our computers or into our personal life and use our resources and take those things. They will cause us trouble. Emotional hurt, too trouble in our lives. People we care about betray us sometimes. They break our hearts over what they said they would do and they didn't. People we love, we see them suffering. When we see them suffering, the trouble that comes is that we suffer too. We lose people we love, whether it's a death or they've gone and moved away a distance, and we miss them. And that trouble comes unintentionally, but it still comes. All these troubles we face will simply be there because we live in a fallen world. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not in these particular cases. You've got troubles, they got troubles, we all got troubles. Uh, just point them out. And then there's a different kind of trouble. Trouble that comes from outside of us, to us. Uh, comes from inside us, I'm sorry. Foolish decisions. Anybody that made a foolish decision, raise your hand. How many of you are lying right now? <laughs> yeah, all the rest of you should have your hand up, right? How about the dumb things that we've done that we should have known better, or that a wise person told us that we should have known better? Often a parent, right? Some things we've left undone. We knew we should have done that or said that to a person or, or worked to make that relationship a different but we did it. Things that we've done over and over and over again. It's something that is, causes trouble that comes from within us. But you see, most importantly, the trouble we experience is sometimes because we disobey or disregard what God has to say to us, especially about the right way to live. Now, our sharp, brilliant, powerfully minded confirmation students they have to memorize the Ten Commandments and the meanings to them, for which, as all of us have had to know, is that those Ten Commandments are a way in which we can know how God would want us to live our life. But often we too will just, you know, not consider them to be important, disobey or disregard them. It's called sin. And we ourselves are responsible for that. It comes from within us, not from outside us. And God gives us those commandments for our own good, created for us so that we would not be in trouble. But because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, we know that we as Christians all will know that kind of trouble too. And lastly, or thirdly, we might say that there's a trouble that comes because the outside world sees us and doesn't like what they see. That we say that there's a right and a wrong. That we say that there is a way that God would have us live, and there's a way that God would not have us live. And when we say things like that, in these absolutes, uh, these truths that we say in the Bible, uh, in that the world reacts against us. And so the world sees us, and it's not a very Christian thing, but the context for which they see us as not always positive. They stereotype us, they make fun of us, they laugh at us. 
trouble always comes. There's one thing that we can count on as a believer even, and that is that trouble will come. Well, you all know that I have a beautiful singing voice. It's like a lark, uh, like morning waking up to a new day. You don't know what to say, do you? <laughs> should we go along with this or should we not? <laughs> well, I don't. Um, but when we talked about trouble like this, uh, there's a, a bit of a phrase, a song that came into my head, and I had to get on YouTube and listen again. And it was sung by Louis Armstrong. Uh, now, some of you who aren't 50 yet, <laughs> you who? <laughs> but go on YouTube and you'll figure it out. Uh, Louis Armstrong was a, a famous black uh, singer and musician, uh, played the, the trumpet just beautifully. Uh, and an actor as well, I might add to that. But he sang, in this case, a song, and it was uh, Nobody Knows the Troubles I've Seen. You all heard it? Yeah. And you could sing it too, but you won't. Um, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Glory! Hallelujah. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. Oh yes, Lord, sometimes I'm almost to the ground. Oh yes, Lord, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrows. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, every day to you I pray. Oh yes, Lord, for you to drive my sins away. Oh yes, Lord, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Glory. Hallelujah. You see, I guess that's the point in it all. Jesus says there's two things that you're going to know. You're going to know trouble because you are in this world. And then you are going to know peace because you are in Often at this point, people will go, well, how do I get some of that peace? What do I need to do in order to find that? How is it that I can do that? And what I want you to know this morning is that you can have that peace because you are in Christ, because Jesus has come to you. Jesus has come to you by going to the cross and dying there in your place and paying the price for all of our trouble, for all of our sin. Jesus knows what you are going through because he's felt what you have felt. He knows you intimately and personally because he's related to the Father who is the creator of all things. And because he knows you like that, he loves you too. And he gives you this peace to endure all the troubles that there are. The Apostle Paul knew this to be true. Paul knew the trouble of every kind. He was thrown into prison, he was beaten, he was chased out of towns, he was shipwrecked, he had every part of that. But he knew the peace of Christ. In his letter to the Corinthians, he, reads, he, he writes this, just how beautiful this is. Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction or our troubles, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves have been comforted from God himself. Isn't that something? Jesus has done that for us. Jesus gives that. So, we can do this today because Jesus gives it to us, this peace. Not something we've earned, but we have by God's grace. In this world, we're going to have trouble. But in Christ, we have peace. Guaranteed. Amen. Let's sing. <laughs> 